Bonjour, hello, welcome to Max Mountain World, up skiing again. Today a continuation of my last video where I touched on the subject that we've got a, a French uh, competition going on here, coming this week actually, a couple of days time. I did that video on Friday, Paris Day, today's Monday and this starts on Wednesday. So I'm out just to see what's going on, there's a lot more been happening on the preparation front, so I'm going to go and check this out and see what's what, it looks very, very interesting. There is a little word from one or two people, maybe it'll be cancelled due to the exceptionally warm and dry weather. Hope not, and uh, we'll just need to see. Anyway, I'm going up the top just now, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll have a wee look around without actually touching the, the piece that are actually getting used. So, here's the video for today, the French Championships competition coming to Les Arts. Quick view check from 2,530 metres. So I'll head anti-clockwise, starting from the north, and we're over towards the eastern side of the Parc des Ecrans. In the big distance there, we've got the Italian Alps, <laughs> and it's not that far away. 40 kilometres to the frontier in a straight line. A few wispy clouds and stuff happening over some of the peaks, but generally speaking, a nice day these wispy clouds at the top. Wow, nice. Now if you look over there, you can see a cloud hanging in a valley over there, and mountain opposite, opium from the side. Wow. Just a beautiful place. People have been skiing and boring on that bit. I can see some marks there now. Let's see if I can catch this. Not too sure. I'll go in on a hit and a hop, and maybe I've not got it right. <laughs> Very difficult to see the viewfinder with the sun in my face. So, around here, a little weather station above the Zenith restaurant ahead of us here, and then, of course, the, the tow that takes us up to the very top at 2,720 metres. So, Pustel lift and the Pustel piste. I'm going to now go and check out the preparations for the competition. Just spotted a guy with the same skis as me there. They're quite rare these skis, the Salomon BBR. So yeah, you can hear almost nothing as that lady goes past. Quite nice up here, the, the surface is nice and flat and quite a nice sort of dusting of powdery type stuff on the top. So uh, head further down and we can get into this uh, setup for the competition thing. So just Watch this chap take off, see what kind of skier he is. Yeah. Hey, he's almost as good as me. Okay, so, <laughs> so that's the top of the lift there. Looking down, and the area over to the right there is not available. So I think they're going to prepare this just before the competition. I'll just say at this point, I know nothing. Just what I see. So this is all I'm doing the video on. I, I might get some information before Wednesday morning. Not too sure. But... Uh, the preparation has happened from there down. A bit of fencing going on at the left there, but we can see right down. Now, I'm going to just head down a little bit and we'll have a closer look at the piste itself. So just a little ski view until my next stop point. We shouldn't far away. Homme de Pierre, one of my favourites, it is closed. So I think, not sure again, <laughs> but a lot of spare posts and a lot of spare fencing about. So I think they're going to do something to shut this off and I think they're going to prepare it to come through a narrow point, maybe with a little jump or whatever. And then you can see the fencing for real, which, uh, sorry about shaking us here, and uh, heading down. Now they've already got slalom flags up. All over the place. Kind of makes the piece look uh, bigger, I think. I don't think it's uh, an effect of my eyesight. I think it's uh, more or less because they put it into perspective. But yeah, sl slalom course and whatnot. When the event happens, I'll be able to show a lot more. Who knows how many people are going to come here towards the end of the week and for next week. But certainly this piece, which is one of the main pieces down from the very top, 
and uh, let's let's count how many people are. We won't have any requirement to be a mathematician. There's absolutely nobody. So just on my way down here, I'm going to answer a question which has been posed by a few people. I have one viewer, Paula, you know who you are, who has made comments on this. And sometimes you go skiing with my poles. I'll let my, my shadow explain. Uh, with my poles, sometimes I just go skiing hands-free. Now, the videos I've done hands-free, you'll see my hands are everywhere. I've done a couple of videos where I've been carrying camera and I carry my poles, which makes it a lot better. You'll probably be able to make that out when I go skiing with both poles, normally even tidier. So it's a balanced thing. It's, you know, just having this, this extra weight to turn with and whatnot, it, uh, it makes a huge, huge difference. So I'm looking down here and I'm only seeing the slalom flags on the outsides of the bends. The main part, I think they're having a downhill race before where they'll put the flags in the center areas. Here's one potential viewing area apart from this stuff. I can walk about and stuff. And wow, that's so tempting. But uh, yeah, as I say, further down, they're only on the outsides as well. And uh, yeah, nice little view. Even further down as well, where, uh, see if I can do this. Again, dazzle dazzle on the old uh, viewfinder. You can see the fencing further down. I'll cover that in a minute or two. Whilst I'm here, I did a video uh, a week or two ago, and I put the first marks on all that mountain on video. The very first marks after, well, at the very end of a snowfall. Check it out. So, the ski, the race piece is just the other side of the trees there, and I'm come down a bit more, I'm about 2,100 to 2,150 metres or so, and uh, yeah, still pretty nice on the piece, plus they'll have made that piece much, much better, it's beautiful, absolutely lovely. A bit clumpy, but not bad, really controllable. Oh wow, another person. <laughs> There's no one down there. There's no one up there. Well, okay, so down at the piece here, again, they've got two or three in the middle there, but I think the downhill uh, part will be beside that, whatever. They've only placed what they can without removing them again. On the Pierre piece, the bottom end of it there, where it rejoins, and uh, it's untouched, virtually untouched. I think a couple of the pea stairs have been on it just to make sure that it is properly closed off. And let's go a bit further down. So, snow's a little bit heavier already, about 50 meters altitude down. Wow, still quite fast though. Let's head over this way. Untouched, untouched. <laughs> Untouched fresh, not that I can do much with it. So some of the officials with ski instructors up there, double checking, testing, and stuff like that. It's just constant. And uh, again, in the middle, there's nothing, but at the sides, the couple of flags there. So this is where that's on the outside of a bend, you can tell by the triple fencing, the catch fencing there. These guys now coming past. It's actually four ski instructors. And someone else, one of the officials I think, little kicker there. Okay, but further down and find the info that I didn't find in the last video. So looking back up, this is a hit and hope with, I can't see the viewfinder at all, it's too sunny. But you can see again, it's only at the sides that they've set up the flags, so coming down one of the steeper parts there. That'll be one of the faster places. They're supposed to be getting over 160 kilometers an hour, or 100 miles an hour. <laughs> wow, that's way faster than I want to go today. But we've got extra fencing in here, but no fencing down the side, I wonder. 
going to have a little look up at the sign here. It means going uphill. Oh wow. Yeah, so we can see more about it up here. That's the lift. That's the unprepared part. The piece goes down over to the right there, back down here and carries on where these uh, posts are and crash marks in important places. Crash mats, sorry. More of these flags down there. Now I'm not going in the forest, I've already seen it's green. I correct myself, they are setting up this fencing. This is the fencing where they put the other fencing on, just tag it on, it makes it a lot quicker for them to set it up. So head down, I'm not a steep bit here, it's just as steep, if not steeper, at the other side of the, the forest there. Snow's holding quite well at this level. 20, 50 metres according to what's in my pocket as it were. So a bit further down and we'll see what gives. Now that last video that I did I thought this would be the finish line but it's not. So uh, it's all marked Fermi closed because it'd be nice to just go straight down the side of the fence in there but I'm not going to do it. I have to respect what these guys are doing and if I keep the camera level you can see how steep that piece is through the trees. That'll be one very fast point for the downhill. So I'll go down here and I'll be just the other side of these trees straight ahead. I think I over zoomed all of that but whatever. There'll be quite a bit of swinging about the camera in this stuff. That's where I was there. And they fenced off down here as well. A little off piece bit off the sides but they've not finished the, the rope. I might just drop over there and see if I can keep high and go and have a look over the far side there. No, not possible. One of the drain rivers there, fencing. Nah. The snow would be nice for it, but uh, I'll end up getting stuck or something. So let's head where that uh, person is in bright pink there and see if I can keep a momentum up here. Failing that, I can always get a button toe back up. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the galloping. Uh, button toe which is just in the distance there and that will bring me up right next to the the race piece so just heading that heads down to the main station that heads down off the left there to 1800 this is one of the longer toes normally there's a, a snow cross here but uh, it's been removed and I'm just going to take this little button up before I do at the side of the piece and again where the fencing has been increased you can see they've got the flags on the outside but not in the middle on the right hand side of the piste up there so go and see if I can see anything different on this so this ski toll a little bit slow it's for beginners a beginners piece next to here another one next to there but uh, yeah again all the flags set up at the sides I think the the center will be uh, painted up with blue ink and stuff which is eco-friendly blue ink. I have looked into this. All right, so that's the video for today. One more little point as well is that obviously no hat on today, it's warm. 10, 11 degrees down at 1800 and not even below freezing. I think it's about one degree at the top there as I started the video. So why don't I go out in t-shirt? Hmm. Well, a few reasons. One, I might fall and I might not be able to move and then I might need the heat that I've accumulated inside my old fearsome Colombian jacket and also the chairlift might break down, I might get stuck on it who knows how long and there's all sorts of other factors, I might get lost or stuck somewhere and whatever and also it's the protection, if I do fall, which I don't do often, the last time I fell was over three years ago and uh, it gives you the protection, if you fall in crystal snow you get road rash, <laughs> terrible road rash. One time when I was in Switzerland, I skied in t-shirt and shorts and I had a friend doing a video, I've since lost it, it was pre-YouTube days, and I took a high-speed fall in the forest. My elbows and my knees were just wrecked, so that's why. Also, this is a learning as well, for when I come up here to watch this competition, there's gonna be a lot of standing around, so I'm gonna to have to conserve my heat then. It might not be as clear and sunny a day, who knows? Anyway, that's it for today. In the rollout, I'll go further down and we'll discover 
where I think the finish line is going to be or maybe even one of the finish lines, I don't know. So that's it for today. Thanks very much for watching. Keep subscribing and until the next video, ciao. So 1900, 1950 meters or so, there's some untouched stuff at the side and it is really nice. <laughs> Slow but it's nice, pretty good. So we'll go past that little lift and let's go and do some investigating. Whoops, grass. <laughs> Wobbly one. Beyond the lift, that's where that steep bit, that last steep bit is. It goes out of sight over the top of the ridge here or the other side of the chair lift. And I'm going back down to 1800, but just before it, we'll have a little look. So uh, the snow's getting quite crystally and clumpy here, which makes it quite controllable. So just above Les Ors, 1800, and this obviously is the arrival point, the finish line somewhere here, whatever, a little gap for them to go away again, take lifts back up. So that's it, all beautifully prepared, not many marks on just from the guys that are actually working on it. Constant job for these guys too, trying to keep the snow on the outlet of the tunnel there. Anyway, that's it for today. More coming a uh, couple of days time Wednesday when it all starts and kicks off.